dedicated to geeks and nerds, you're listening to Project I Radio, 24-7, Nerdgasm. And now, a Project I Radio exclusive presentation, The Horror Show with Brian King. No comment! Sir, what about the ending to The Rising? Mother <laughs> What part of no comment don't you understand? Do you understand this? This interview is over. No comment. The f***? Brian Keane was also unavailable for comment. Welcome back to The Horror Show, brought to you by Project iRadio. I'm your host, Brian Keane. With me today are both of my co-hosts. First of all, Dave Meteor Notes Thomas. Uh, I'm here. America and, is excited. Yeah, and <laughs> speaking of Mr. Excitement, Coop is back with us today. Uh, I am ish. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by the second annual Scares the Care Weekend, the 501c IRS-approved charity horror convention taking place July 24th through the 26th in Williamsburg, Virginia. Come meet Kim Coates from Sons of Anarchy, Kane Hodder, Piper Laurie, Sid Haig, Ken Faree, Brian Keane, yay, Edward Lee, Kelly Owen, ooh, <laughs> F. Paul Wilson, Carlton Mellick, and many, many more. All of the proceeds go to charity. Visit scaresthatcareweekend.com for more details. And I've also been asked to remind you listeners once again, for you Reddit users out there, Project iRadio now has its own subreddit. Go to reddit.com slash r slash project i radio. And yes, you too can type on a message board like the three of us used to do back in the late 90s. That's a that's a thing again now. They, they, they've, they've, everything new, everything old is new again. Yes. Or something like that. Something like that, yeah. I obviously need more coffee. <laughs> well, there's a pot over there for you. Correct you are. Uh, and, and I'm drinking... Uh, Flying Dog tonight, so we thank them. They are not a sponsor, but they should be. It's okay, they were they were Hunter S. Thompson's beer company. So, <laughs> and uh, we said last week uh, this show was originally supposed to be uh, the three of us talking about the historical impact of writer William Hope Hodgson and how he yeah. served as an influence on everyone from H.P. Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard to Simon Clark and Tim Levin. Um, obviously, we have decided to. To change that game plan. Yeah. Uh, as well, we didn't decide it. It was kind of you know decided for us. Yeah, the universe kind of decided yeah. to change. Uh, for those of you out there uh, who maybe don't frequent social media, might not be aware. Uh, author Tom Piccarelli uh, passed away. Well, by the time you're listening to this, it'll have been almost a week. Um, so we're pretty much gonna spend the entire show talking about him he you know obviously he was a hugely influential uh, on this generation not just of horror writers but crime writers and western writers and thriller writers so we're going to talk about him but we're also going to share some personal anecdotes um because of that i didn't really pick out any news items this week i mean if you guys want Dave, I know you wanted to argue with me about True Detective. I don't want to argue with you. I just, um, it, it's reached its halfway point right now. Um, and I don't want to give any spoilers because it's only halfway over, and I know people don't necessarily watch it week to week. I just think that there was a something really interesting happened at the end of the second episode that I kind of would, thought that was going to go differently. And I'm fine with what they're doing, but it might have been kind of cool if they had gone another direction. I think I'm gonna say. I think it would have been cool. Um, I'm trying to discuss this without spoilers. Yeah, it's hard to do that spoilers. I, I'm glad that it went the I, way it went. I suspect, yeah. I suspect two things. I suspect they, that they were not trying to kill that character. <laughs> 
Um, and I suspect there's going to be a callback to that based on the dream sequence he had while he was out. Yeah, I, um, I agree. Where Where is this place? I don't know. You got here first. Yeah. I suspect I don't have to watch it because it's going to be all over Facebook anyway. You, you don't have to. You've read Thomas Ligotti and, and yeah. Laird Barron, haven't you? Yeah. Then you don't need to watch it. <laughs> yeah. if, Roger Bean. It's yeah. like 28 days later. You had read yeah. Son of Clark's Blood Crazy. Yeah. In the stands. In the stand. Yeah. What yeah. the hell did I need that for? <laughs> you don't watch TV, do you? No. No. I no. So every time, you know, I actually had to look up uh, by... Uh, you know, I use the interwebs, and you know Brian was talking about he had a crush on Rachel you know, McAdams. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, somebody's like, "Oh, you haven't seen you know so and so, you know, and you know, what are you a cyborg?" And evidently, I'm a cyborg because I have no idea who this person was. Pretty girl, but very, yeah, very, very yeah. attractive girl. I, yeah, great I, a lot of times I watch TV and, and movies and stuff, but I don't know who the people are in them. Yeah. Whereas Phoebe uh, is plugged into celebrity gossip so she always knows who all these people are right so uh for example um we went to see uh the riff track sarknado 2 last week which by oh, the way i saw you i, yeah, I saw you the, posting the, about that that, that was I amazing you posting but about that. in the sharknado movies there's a lot of celebrity cameos mm -hmm. and she can pick out all these people like in the background um, and i'm like oh, okay <laughs> i have yeah. no idea um, yeah. <laughs> you see it's not so much like a you know celebrity but, like i can tell you you know publication dates and you know when this when this single was released from right. this album and you know i can tell you all that shit well it's but it, like yeah you know what actors in this i got fucking nothing the only two it shows never sticks the only two shows i can think of that in the last decade that i i know of you watching were cosmos mm -hmm. and well, that doesn't count well it's a television show yeah, but it's, it's a it, documentary, though. Yeah, it's it's, it's Cosmos. That doesn't count. Well, okay. I mean, you know. And I'm, Rescue Me, you you did watch some of Rescue Me. Yeah, no, no, no. Rescue Me, I would. Um, you know, this was that was uh, prior to Netflix and all that. So I would get the, I would buy the seasons. You know, on DVDs, yeah. so I buy the, I buy the seasons, and um, yeah, but uh, you know, even then, I couldn't tell you. You know who? You know, aside from Dennis Leary, you know, I know there's there's actors. I've seen them in other things. I can fucking tell you who's who's who or what. You know. Well, no, I uh, True Detective. I I know a lot of people are not feeling this season. They want the the quiet supernatural dread that yeah. hung over the last season. I'm telling you, it's there. It, people aren't seeing it, but right. it's been there in every episode, and they're going to reveal it here real soon. Um, I'm loving it. I, I, I too, I am enjoying it. Um, especially after the, especially the ending of the last episode. The bloodbath of uh, last the, week. Yeah, don't, yeah. yeah I, people have not watched it yeah. yet. Um, you're in for a, a violent treat, let's say. It's, yeah. It's crazy. Um, but no, it's, I, it's one of the better shows on TV. So, uh, I guess the only other news, not news, I, I'm very glad that, uh, again, I was not at Comic-Con, because every year I look at the coverage. I used to go every year when I lived in California, so the last year I was there was uh, 2000, and it was nuts then, but it, it, it was nothing like it is now. Everyone, Absolutely nothing. Everyone in yeah. our field was talking about yeah. Comic-Con this week. I yeah. could give a rat's ass. I, I mean, I, I, was, really I, I follow, like, io9 would list all the panels yeah. you know, and stuff, and everyone was like, I don't care about this. Yeah. I don't care about this. I mean, it's all these movies coming out that I just don't care about the like, only yeah. thing that caught my attention was rom space knight and micronauts are coming back into print as comic books and the only reason that caught my attention is because i had an affection for those when i was like 14 years old right doesn't mean i'm gonna rush out and buy them now <laughs> at 47 almost 48 you know uh -huh. <laughs> I don't buy. I've said before I don't no, buy I mean, comics anymore because they're five dollars each. That's why I don't buy comics. No, not necessarily genre news, but uh, you know, Bloom County. Has I had that County. right here in my notes. Yeah, yeah that, um, this I mean, is you know, big and news. you know, that's you know, I may not know who this you know really cute uh, actress is. Are you allowed to say actress, or is it supposed to, everybody's supposed to be actor? Everybody's uh, gonna be offended by everything these days. Yeah, so. fuck it, it's me. <laughs> um, you know, she was really cute, but I mean, she's not. You know, anywhere she can't be anywhere near as cool as Bill the Cat. And she's not as cute as Opus. No, no. Or Lola, no. Lola Granola. Oh my God! No, I, it, I'm I'm very very stoked to see that. I am. No, it was just those what three panels. Right. And yeah. no, that, that I was very stoked to see that. Well, and you the saw New that. Horizons probe. We're starting to see more and more of Pluto. Did you and see Pluto the heart is, on Pluto? 
Yes, I've saw yeah. the, I've seen the hard part of Pluto, and um, it is something like uh, 43, 43 miles larger than anticipated. So, you yep. know, we're getting we're getting more data back, you know, on that from the New Horizons probe, which I think is amazing because we're not going to see another. We're done seeing new new bodies of the solar system. This is going to be your first look at it. You know, I mean, I got you know for nerdlings like me that remember the uh, you know the Vikings and the you know the Mariner probes and you know Voyager, you know, and the old uh, you know the, uh, the the Saturn probes, you know the Cassini. You know, this is like nerdgasm for me. Like I'm totally freaking stoked about it. Like mountains, cliffs, you know, geography futures on Pluto. You know, I, I just kind of want to see Amigo cylinder. That's really <laughs> <laughs> that would be. I kind of want to see. A, I kind of want to see a monolith on one of these planets, yeah, but right? I, well, I just want to see the space aliens come and wiping us out before we can spread our stupidity no, to I've the been, rest of the galaxy because I, we deserve it. I've been very happy with a lot of the space news recently, and you know I've been watching China's lander on Mars or not Mars, uh, the Moon. Mm -hmm. And you know, been watching the Pluto fly by, and, and all these other ones. It's awesome. Um, and yeah, Bloom County. If you look over Dave's shoulder, you can see I've got the entire collection, all the archives. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's the coffee huge, cup there. Yeah, there's yeah. the coffee cup right there. I have all two. It's yeah, I, that in the far side too. Welcome back. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I guess these aren't going to be. He's released the first one to Facebook. I, I don't guess they're going to be syndicated in the paper. He's just going to do them for free and I, put them online. I think so. I really yeah. have not had a chance to, to read about it. Um, I've been busy doing many, many other things. Uh, today, I, I went to get what's called Global Entry, which is a, basically a fast pass way of uh, getting back into the country. You use a kiosk instead of going through the customs line. Around these parts, Global Entry means something very different. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> But so I, I, I have a story, of course, because I can't do anything simply. So you have to go to the airport to do this. So I go down to the airport today, and I have my directions as to where this office is, and I'm walking down the hallway, and the hallway just ends. <laughs> it just stops. And I'm like, well, this is odd. And I'm like looking around for signs. I don't see any signs. So I go, there's an information desk. So I walk into the information desk, and I hand the guy my piece of paper. I'm, like, I'm trying to find this place. Where is this? He goes, well, you see that wall down there? I'm like, yeah. He goes, well, if that wall wasn't there, you could walk right to it. But that wall's there now. That's helpful. So yeah. essentially, he told you you can't get there from here. Yes. So basically, what happened, it turns out they're doing construction on part of the terminal, uh -huh. and you should go outside and walk around and go back in. Perhaps a sign informing us of this fact would be very useful. I don't know. No. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, I told the guy, I said, I would have never guessed this. Like, <laughs> I just assumed that somehow I was in the wrong part of the building. But no, I was right, and you know, yeah. did not have my psychic powers working today. But fortunately, I was then directed the correct way to go, and went, and it was a quick thing. And I, you know, I'm not concerned about being fingerprinted because, especially since I already had it done because I used to work for the government, so. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but now I have that all taken care of. So uh, when I go out of the country in a few weeks, it'll be so much So this faster. is like the easy pass line for passport. Exactly. Numbers. Yeah. Um, it's basically when you come back, there's a kiosk that you go use instead of waiting in line. So, and you're going to the Wacken Festival. I am going Germany. to Wacken, which is the world's largest metal festival. Uh, I believe it's 70 bands, 75,000 people. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be nuts. Yeah. I'm 53 years old. I not sure if I'm going to survive this, but <laughs> it's one of those things as a metal fan, I feel that I should do at some point in my life. Yeah. As soon as I almost died last year with my heart condition, now is the time to go. Yeah. So, yeah. and plus the main reason we're going is uh, about this time last year, um, Sabotage, the band Sabotage, which you guys know, but mm. probably a lot of our listeners don't because they haven't been active in a long time. Sabotage basically at one point, kind of turned into Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Right. And, right, right, uh, right. of course, everybody knows they are because they're ridiculously popular. That's pretty much when I quit listening to Sabotage. Exactly. Sabotage has not played a live show in 12 years. They're playing at Wacken this year. Yeah. So is Trans-Siberian Orchestra. That should be interesting. At the same time, which I find very odd, but we, we that's another discussion. But anyway, this is the first show in 12 years. So my ex-wife, Mary, who I've talked about before, she works outside of the U.S. most of the time. For like last year, she was outside of the country for 42 weeks. Right. So we basically communicate by text. So I texted her and said, hey, Sabotage is playing a Wacken next year. And that's all I said, you know, because I figured, oh, you're in Europe all the time. You could, you know, it's easy for you to get there. Because I don't know if you know, in Europe, like, flights in Europe are dirt cheap. 
you can fly like 50 bucks between cities. It's right. like crazy cheap, like unlike our air system. So about a week or so later, she texts me back or sends me an email. And it's like, okay, I got us whacking tickets. I got us a hotel. I got a rental car, and, and we'll uh, use miles to fly. Yeah. So oh, okay. she said a whole thing. So I'm going to hell of an ex-wife. Yeah, I, you know, she goes. We, we go to Prog Power every year. We sponsor a band every year, and uh, so you know, she's she's my musical buddy basically. So I'm going with her and one of her friends, Emily, and um, yeah, we're we're gonna go to Germany for four days and uh, see metal bands and um, try not to die. I guess I don't know. I, but, I'm um, curious. Yeah. You're 53. Yes. Do you find at that age? If there's a band that comes around, you think, well, this may be the last time I get to see them. Are you more inclined to go? Um, it depends. Honestly, and I think this is just a function of me being old and other humans, it depends where they're playing. The yeah. perfect example is Rush. I love Rush. I've seen Rush 10 times, probably. I'd have to sit down and figure it out, but it's something like that. Um, they're one of my all-time favorite bands, um, and the rumor is that this tour they are currently on is the last tour they're right. going to do. Right. I was like, well, I, if there's last tour, I have to go see them. Where are they playing near me? Oh, Jiffy Lube Live in Virginia. Fuck that. <laughs> because the last time I went there to see Rush, which was like three or four years ago, I don't remember, it took me almost three hours to get in and almost two hours to get out. Wow. Because they have a shit parking area that has one way in and one way out, and it's a nightmare. And I'm just like, nope, I love Rush. I've seen them ten times. Good enough for me. You yeah. Know? yeah. Uh, it, like I say, it depends on the band and where they're playing. I'm all about new experiences if there's a band i've seen five or six times playing on the same night there's a band i've never seen i'd rather go see the band i've never seen right you know that's why i like going to these festivals there's always bands i've never seen before see um, I'm, I'm excited for this coop and our friend tomo and my oldest son right we're gonna have the four of us are gonna go see faith no more next month right that's actually I'm, when i'm a whacking because yeah. i was supposed to go with you guys i right. i'm excited yeah. Not because it's a very real possibility this may be the last time any of us see Faith No More. I mean, oh, yeah. we're all getting yeah. up there, and Faith No More, they've always marched to their own drummer. It may be another 20 years before they do this. Exactly. I, I'm excited that my oldest gets to see them. He, you know, he listens to Linkin Park and, and all these bands that have clearly been inspired right. by Faith No More. Exactly, yeah. He only knows like two or three Faith No More songs. It's going to be very interesting to watch his reaction when they're playing some of the old staples, you know? Yeah, and, and yeah. Like, well, oh. yeah. Well, was, yeah. I, I think I've discussed before that, uh, you, know, I, you know, Phoebe and I are together at night. We do what all couples do, sit and watch terrible YouTube videos on our phones. Um, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> The other week, you know, we were talking about Faith No More, you know, because, right. you know, we are talking about it on the show. And she's like, well, I don't know any Faith No More songs. I'm like, yes, you do. And she's like, no, I don't know. I'm like, yes, you do. So I get the phone out. I go to YouTube and bring up Epic. Right. And two seconds in. Oh, I know this song. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, if you were alive in the 90s, you know this song. So that, that was the only one she remembered, though. The other yeah. ones I was playing, you know, that were hits as far as that goes, FM radio hits. Uh, she was not familiar. But then, you know, we've. You've been in the car when Phoebe Rock is on, so right. you know that's not her kind of thing. Phoebe Rock, yeah, oh God. yeah, yeah. It's um, it's it's frightening, but um, yeah. So yeah, we're going to watch. Phoebe and I, I, I should, I yeah. should mention to the audience, uh, we went to uh, the York Emporium yes. uh, memorialized our, our dear friend J F Gonzalez over the weekend. Um, we sealed some of his ashes and an unopened bottle of George Dickel in a wall. And then the wall was sealed and covered over, and, and then bookshelves were anchored in front of it. So if you go there, you're not going to be able to find him. But uh, he's there, and there's a sealed letter that, you know, 100 years from now, when a wrecking ball tears down that store, they're going to find it. They're going to they're know what this is. But anyway, that was a preamble to, in the car on the way there, it's, it's me and Dave and Phoebe. And Phoebe has control of the iPod, and It's Raining Men came on, and... Phoebe and I did a lovely rendition for Dave. I, I think you were impressed. I, I said that uh, the three of us should sing in a scary, scary, scary okay. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. I won't even need whiskey. I, well, but if I do it, I want to do it for charity. So right. I if, want the record to show that that is an absolute lie. No, I'll, I, if you char- won't need whiskey. If, if the scares of care charity is involved, I will do it without whiskey. Yeah, I, I, I love I, the charity. I, think, I support the I think charity. this is a money-raising thing. You see them. these kids, they yeah. help. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll do it without the bourbon. Yeah. 
No. It'll be better with the bourbon. Well, that's but... what I was saying. But <laughs> <laughs> you notice that I'm not promising to do without bourbon. Well, I, for me, it's margarita, but, uh, but it, you know. <laughs> I don't know that I want to do It's Raining Men, though. Okay, well, then what would it be? It's got to be something from that. No, I think it does have to be that. I don't know all the words. It's karaoke. It doesn't and matter. And I'm going blind in my left eye. Uh-huh. So, I, well, yeah, you're right. I could make up my own words. There I you do go. it on the show all the time. Yeah, yeah there you go. Would Phoebe be willing to sing, like, something off Ice-T's original Gangsta? No, or? no, that's not her. That's not her. <laughs> it's got to be Eric something. Eric B. and Rakim. <laughs> it's got to be something like It's Raining Men. That's the, the kind of stuff she likes. She likes 70s disco and trashy dance music. We could do some Bee Gees. <laughs> Me, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we had to get them started. <laughs> I was talking about whacking and metal bands, right, 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 and, and then yeah. you know, yeah. descends. But, to, I mean, it, descends it, to this. One thing you you brought up about Jesus, and I was going to say this the other day, and I'm being serious about this. I think that the kids of all of us should know that we did this. The reason being is that who knows how much longer we're going to be right. around, and I think the younger kids should know that Jesus is is there. Well, so when the building gets condemned yeah. or torn down in the future, they can say, hey, wait a minute. His yeah. daughter knows. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my seven-year-old knows. Right. Um, yeah, I was I was going to mention that the other day. I was like, does anybody... I, knew, I figured his daughter knew, but she's a little older. But, yeah. like, I was thinking, like, you know, your kid who knew Jesus would be a perfect person. Yeah, my seven-year-old yeah. knows. Now, he yeah. didn't quite understand cremation. He thought right. we put Jesus's actual body in the wall. Jesus would actually have yeah, liked that. He would have loved that. <laughs> that would have been a great yeah. Yeah. No, that would have been. yeah. He would have been like, yeah. yeah but uh, I, I, yeah. I'm I, stalling because I don't want to get the pick. So I'm going to no. go back to Bloom County. Um, well, I still want to talk about wagons. So. All right. Well, I'm going to talk about Bloom County first. I just want to say I it's. I know we have a lot of younger listeners. Um, you, you might not know what Bloom County is. Maybe you've seen pictures of the penguin and you didn't quite know what it was. You have to go back to the 80s when the only, only comic strip that did anything halfway funny was Doonesbury. And the only time it was funny was when they had their Hunter S. Thompson ripoff character, Duke. Everything else was Marmaduke and the fucking family fucking circus. Not the channel coop there. but And then along comes this strip, Bloom County, and it's... It's not only skewering politicians, it's skewering Ozzy Osbourne. It's the first time David Lee Roth was on the comics page. And you remember that? Yeah. Us Festival? Uh, yeah. You know, um, it was definitely a product of its time. When you go back and reread it, some of the references <clears throat> are indeed dated. But I'm so glad it's back. And I dig the idea that he's just putting it up for free on his Facebook page every day. That way he doesn't have to worry about deadlines. Well, if indeed he's doing that, unless that, this is just like the teaser for, you know, something else. I mean, but that said, well, I mean, apparently if, the if first a Bloom County, if a Bloom County, um, you know, trade, uh, you know, perfect band trade paperback came out, you know, I'd be good. Too. I'd get it. Yeah. You know, I kind of want to, you know, another flexi disc of the Billy and the Boingers. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I put that on the, I put that up on Facebook from some, it was just a few weeks ago that I posted that. I had, you know, it wasn't a premonition or anything. It no, just, yeah, I remember, know, yeah, I saw you post that, yeah. 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 Do, it just, you, do you need another coffee while I'm up? I always need another All right. coffee. <laughs> Freaking <laughs> coffee. Do, do you need, need oxygen? Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did this with Mary, I'm in your microphone now. You don't see that the was, thrill that, that was she very was. that was very dirty, yeah. and I'm gonna ask you to never <laughs> do that again. <laughs> Mary seemed to like it. How what was the other uh, the this? other Bloom County Lefty Lucy? Oh, okay. <laughs> the, um, Death Tone. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. yes. Death Tone. Yeah. I think the next Flexa Disc, if you're taking request, is uh, it should be Death Tone, and you could have Death Tone. At the Wacken Fest. There you go. Yeah. Right. 2017. We can make that happen. That, that sounds awesome. We could absolutely right. make I mean, that happen. I, you know, I, I just brought up the schedule here. You know, it's four days. I mean, th this is just an example of like one of the stages. Uh, so it's Epica, Sepultura, At the Gates, Opeth, Black Label Society, and Running Wild. Holy shit. That's just one stage. I'm Jeff and Cooper, on, and I support that. Yeah. Message. On another stage, it's two bands whose names I can't pronounce. But then Queensryche, 
And that's the Good Queens, right? Not Tate Rock. Okay. Dream Theater. <laughs> that was going to be my question. Hey, wait. That was for you, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Dream Theater, In Flames, and then I don't know what the Boss Hoss is, but that that's that stage. Uh, and then and this is all the same day, by the way. On another stage, it's Angra, Falconer, Stradivarius, Annihilator, and Opeth. Uh, and, Annihilator. Wait, uh, no, no, it's uh, Annihilator and Within Temptation. Oh, fuck. I've yeah. So that. these are all simultaneous? How do you decide which stage you want to go uh, it's some of them overlap some of them it's like you're going to be running around a lot um, wow you know and uh, I mean it's just not, and then there's like a ton of bands playing like that you've never heard of in your life right you know uh, there's a band playing which I by the way is my new favorite band name called Tears for Beers I don't know what they sound like but that's a great name yeah it is we great. said they should do death metal covers or Tears for Fears songs that would be awesome I, I, yeah. I yes <laughs> yes that's that thank you but like here's another stage Death Angels playing uh, nuclear Assault, My Dying Bride. Wow. You know, Nuclear Assault is yeah. back together. Armored Saints playing. <laughs> um, like I said, Sa Sabotage is playing. Before Sabotage is Rob Zombie. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Udo, the ex lead singer of Accept, right. Accept yeah, yeah. Is, is playing. And then, like I said, TSO is playing that one night. Um, what about Max Sabbath? No, Max Abbott is sadly not playing because I would go nuts to see that. I saw that video. Yeah, I think the, it was uh, David Scout, whose birthday is today. Happy birthday, Happy David. Happy birthday, David Scout. And uh, yeah. Gary Brombeck. Happy birthday, Gary. Gary. Oh, it's Gary's too? Yeah. 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 And, uh, no, I saw that that he posted, and yeah. I giggled myself uh, stupid yeah. for 45 freaking minutes. Somebody sent me that like a couple of weeks ago. They're like, you need to watch this. And, yeah. of course, I'm like, I not only watch I need to see them in concert. They do, need a double bill of Max Sabbath. And, uh, and I can't think of the K9ness? K9ness. No, the uh, BG's Metal Tribute, which I can't think of the name of right now. Oh, God. I, they're, they're actually really good. I've never yeah. heard that. Yeah, I, it's I, a, I need to. They actually played at the Ramsey in Baltimore, but I was ill and could not go. And no one informed me, knowing my love of the BGs. Well, if they come back around, I might love a metal. Yeah. So, uh, sure. also on Saturday, Amorphous is playing, and Sabaton and Cradle of Filth, and uh, Judas Priest. No shit. Yeah. No shit. Now, Judas Priest Mary said we're going to miss. I've seen Judas Priest a bunch of times. Right. Mary's not You're a fan. Right. Her friend is like, hey, whatever. Because we have to get up at like 3 o'clock in the morning the next day to go to the airport. So, but yeah, it's going to be four days of. I mean, here, you know, here's the schedule. I'm just scrolling through it. It's, yeah, it's that's... insane. It's, go on the website, Wacken uh, Open Air, and just look at the map. WackenOpenAir.com? Yeah. Look at the map. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I will. I yeah, will. Because I definitely will. We have nothing. I mean, I'm never going to be able to get to yeah. to go to such a thing, but yeah, I would definitely. Yeah, we have you know. nothing in this country even remotely close to this. Yeah. 75,000 people. I mean, yeah, no, that's, it's, that's massive. It's, I mean, Prog Power is one of the biggest metal festivals in the in the U.S., and that's about 1,500 people. Well, metal so, is way more popular in Europe than it is here. It's way more popular. Yes. And also, it's way easier to travel around Europe. Like, if you live in France, it's way easier to get from France to Germany than I would say to get from the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States. Yeah. You know, because yeah, yeah. this is just so big. That's why stuff like this is just never caught on here. And now, I mean, there's some big festivals. Like, the M3 Festival, they have in Maryland every year. Mm -hmm. I, I forget that draws. That draws a decent number. I don't know if they still do that rock fest. Yeah, but I don't think you're having anything that's drawing, you know, no, 75,000 No, nothing, 000. nothing. Well, in that lineup, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. But again, it's really easy for bands to travel around Europe. Um, you know, it's just, it's a different environment. So, but I, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I had already promised uh, Rachel. Autumn Rachel Deering, Autumn Deering. I'm bringing her a shirt. She asked specifically for a shirt. Make so. her give you a graphic novel in return or something. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. That's mean. <laughs> no, no. She, she talks to me as nice, so. <laughs> Rachel is, is one of the few creators out there that actually talks to you and yeah. for reasons other than the usual reasons. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't ask me to, you know, show Brian her drawings of zombies yes. or whatever it is. She talks to me about food. So. I love Rachel. I, have, I, I, I cannot have wait to meet her. her. I'm saying this is not yeah. the Rachel that you have a crush on, right? No, no, that's Rachel McAdams. Okay. Although I do have a crush on, on Rachel Deering, too, and her wife, Jessica. I have yeah. a crush on them both. Um, no. I, I have come to loathe most people in comics. <laughs> um, there's a very small group that I don't, you know, Keith Giffen, Justin Jordan, uh, you know, Colin, Colin Bunn, obviously, uh, Mike Hawthorne. Um, and uh, I'm not going to sit here and, and name names because I know I'll forget somebody. You but just yeah. did. Well, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Why do we have 
thought he was a third co-host. <laughs> to keep oh, that's alive. somebody has because to call... Kelly can't talk in the fucking microphone. <laughs> somebody has to call bullshit on you. Speaking of Kelly, we have to make sure anybody going to Scares and Cares, when you see her, say, oh, look, a celebrity. Why? Because it tortures her. It's fun. Oh, okay. She got mad at me last year for doing that, so now everybody, I think everybody should do it. Okay. Yeah. Because we're right. like, oh, there's a celebrity in her presence. Okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. Point being, Rachel's fucking awesome. Yes. And, and, yeah, people should be reading her graphic novels and her prose soon, which I was hoping we could announce this week, but we still haven't been allowed to yet. Yeah. So we're still waiting on some contracts from some folks, but... All right, well, uh, before we go any further, I do want to mention again, this episode is brought to you by the second annual Scares the Care Weekend, a 501c IRS-approved charity horror convention taking place in two weeks in Williamsburg, Virginia. 100% of the proceeds go to charity. Um, you can visit scaresthecareweekend.com for more details. And just a reminder, we will be doing a show there Thursday night before the convention starts. Uh, if you're there... Come hang out. It's no additional charge to get into that, and uh, you can be part of the the auditorium audience. So yes, you can come yell at me, and you can see Dave live on stage because that's that's what everybody wants. You can yeah. see Mike Lombardo with Dave live on stage. There's a good chance if Lombardo's there, we may get arrested. You so. can see <laughs> F. Paul Wilson and Tom Monteleone out in the audience, drunk as shit on. <laughs> With whatever scotch Tom has in his glass, heckling us like Statler and Waldorf. That alone, right there, is worth the drive. I, you know, um, you'll see Lombardo, and Lombardo doesn't need alcohol to be insane. You so. can, you can yeah. see Edward Lee standing at the back of the auditorium, looking at his watch and twitching because he hasn't vaped in five minutes. It's time to go outside. <laughs> oh, you can vape in here, by the yeah, way, too. Vaping is fine. So, and, and you could see. I, I was yeah. going to anyway. All right. You, you, you could see Celebrity Kelly on. Actually, who you can see? Phoebe. Phoebe will be there. Yeah. She Rare will. public appearance. Hey, I'll mention Carlton Mellick. I know Carlton's got a huge fan base. Yeah. When was the last time Carlton signed anywhere on the East Coast? It's been a really yeah. long time. And when's the next time? Yeah. yeah. You know? No, I, I'm not a fan of most conventions, but I went to this last year, the first year, and it was a ton of fun. And uh, it'll be actually a week when you hear this podcast, a week from this, a week third, from this episode. Yeah, yeah. from this episode um, that we'll be live on stage being nitwits. Unless so. something goes terribly wrong. Well, you know, that's always possible. You know, yeah. the space aliens could come and <laughs> say, no, we've had enough of this, and <laughs> that's the end of that. But uh, no, it, it, it's a good time, and if you can make it there, even for a day, I highly recommend it. All right. Well, something else I highly recommend, if you haven't, is this week, go buy something by Tom Petrilli and yeah, read really. it. Um, we've all three been dancing around this. Obviously, we don't want to do this part No, of the show, not really. <laughs> but uh, we have to, because that's what the fuck this show is about. Um, I guess I'll start it off. I'm just looking at the expression on the two of your faces, and I'll give you a moment. I'll start us off. Um, so yeah, Tom Piccarilli, um, I just wrote a thing today about, about him for Locust Magazine, and, uh, I've completely blanked out on everything I fucking wrote. Um, basically, I met Tom back in the, the late 90s, when the internet was still in its infancy, and when horror as a genre was supposedly still dead and buried. Um, he was one of many people that used to hang out in this, this little internet chat room uh, dedicated to horror fiction. And if you can believe this sort of thing, back then there were really only two or three websites that were actually dedicated to horror fiction. Yeah. Um, now, most of us in there were novices, uh, but you know we were graced with Richard Lehman and John Peelan and Ray Garten. And you know they would offer us advice and encouragement. Now, with Lehman and Garten, it always came, their their advice was from the perspective of, of veteran authors who had already seen it all and done it all, and their advice was with a, a wisdom, a clarity that comes with looking back. Pick, he, he was the same age as us. He was two years older than me, um, and he had already had some success. He had two novels. He had a bunch of short stories. He'd been editing some stuff, but to us, 
he was he was just like Lehman and Garden. I mean, you know, this guy had fucking made it already. Um, he could have very easily played that, and he never did. He offered the same advice and encouragement, and, and his came from a more immediate place because he was competing for many of those same markets that the rest of us were. But None of us were really competing well, with Pick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you know what? I mean, um, he, he didn't have to take the time to do it, but he always did. Um, and, you know, he, he became very successful in horror and then he'd had enough of that. He moved on to doing Westerns and he did two of those and then he moved on to doing crime and then noir and then thrillers. He went wherever his muse took him and every time he did it, you know, you, you hear the term writer's writer. Um, he was absolutely that, you know. Everybody, I mean, the giants of the genres, whether it was, you know, Koontz and King and horror or, you know, their equivalents in crime, they raved about Pick. They wrote fan letters to him. And, and he would take the time, even at the height of his popularity, he would take the time to write fan letters to beginning writers that none of us had ever heard of. Right. Just because he wanted them to know, hey, I enjoyed your book. Um, yeah, he did that right up until he couldn't do it anymore. Um, I don't know. He and I, we used to, I, I don't know when it started. I always called him big bro. He always called me little bro. At, at, at his wedding, he actually took me around to every one of his family members. And he's Italian. He's got a big family. But he's like, this is this is our other little bro. That's how he introduced me to everybody. Um, yeah, I, I really did think of him as a big brother. He He had my back. He stuck up for me early on. I won't mention the editor's name. There was an editor he put me in contact with to write a column for their magazine. And I wrote 12 columns and I still hadn't been paid. And I was a newbie. I didn't want to rock the boat. And Pick went to bat for me and actually destroyed a friendship he'd had with this person for a long time just to get me paid. You know, he, he had my back like a big brother. And like a big brother, he turned me on to shit that I hadn't discovered yet. El Topo. Ricky O, the story of Ricky, you know, shit like that. Um, you know, I, I mean, I got a million pick stories. Um, and maybe I'll tell them after I let you guys go here. But that, that's, <clears throat> that's what we're missing. He, he passed away this past Saturday uh, after two very long battles with brain cancer. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, I mean, I was there, you know, as far as, you know, when I met Vic, uh, I can pinpoint it a little better because I was living in Tampa and it would have been late 96, early 97, somewhere around there. And, uh, yeah, it was before the chat room was the message boards and Vic was one of the, uh, the people that I had met uh, virtually anyways. Uh, the same as you know, right. layman and garden and um, it pick was he was enthusiastic about about writing and about reading and about you know you know creating things and and you know that level of enthusiasm you know it was infectious it was infectious where you know, he would make suggestions to, you know, from an editor's standpoint when he was in, you know, pirate writings, you know, he, he actually, they had like a form letter, you know, when he was editing uh, pirate writings. It, they had a form letter where it was like, you know, hey, this isn't right for us, da 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 you know, all these reasons why any particular story could be rejected. And... You know, they had a uh, space down on the bottom, and he would, you know, he would write in that, you know, pick script. I mean, nobody yep. else had handwriting. Like <laughs> you know, I mean, it was like it, it, he's his own font, really. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, of, you know, you know, this story, you know, try this. You know, he would give suggestions. You know, he he kept it very personal on just about every level, and. He continued that, you know, into into his own work. 
it was you know a lot of you know particularly his early stuff was very personal oh yeah um you know insights into his life and if you knew the stories and you read between the lines you knew you knew what he was talking oh, about yes. you know i picked up on a lot of it um at least you know the the settings and stuff because pick and i we were from the same general area he was from out on the island and uh you know i was you know from his term you know upstate even though it's you know actually closer to manhattan than he was but uh you know, we would talk, we connected a lot, um, you know, local for us, uh, you know, scenes and places and things. He, he knew the, uh, had at least a passing familiarity with uh, DeFeo, who was the family that was uh, murdered in uh, Amityville. Right. And the, Amityville you know, Horror. Yeah, the Amityville Horror, which Ed and Lorraine Warren came in and, you know, pretty much rate the memory all out of proportion and made a bazillion dollars off of some bullshit. But <laughs> that's a whole nother show. <laughs> yeah, there you go. When we eventually when we have Ray Garten on that Yeah, you know, we're gonna yeah, cover that. Get, get get Ray to talk about yep. Ed and Lorraine Warren. That's some funny shit. <laughs> um but it, you know Pick was you know, he was uh, just a fantastic person. He was, he always had time for, you know, if you had a problem, you know, something that you wanted to talk about or advice that you needed or whatever, you know, he would, he, he would do his best to, you know, give everybody the benefit of the doubt, even some of those that he shouldn't. You know, it's like when, you know, this guy is not going to go into mentioning names, but, you know, even back in the day of message boards and you know the early chat rooms the java based shit which would crash every 15 fucking minutes <laughs> um you know believe it or not there were still assholes out there oh yes yeah and you know he would give you know we a couple of times i had to tell the pick this guy's a fucking putz <laughs> knock it off mcclellan falk <laughs> fuck McClellan me the running falk. You know, it was like I mean, the there were some of them where it was like, you know, it, this guy's obviously being a jerk. And, you know, for Pick to get pissed at somebody and, and lay it down you know, <laughs> on why they were a jerk, it didn't happen very often, but was usually very, very funny to watch because, well, because he, he pointed out everything so very well. Yeah. Well, as far as uh, his writing, you know, I, uh, I, I loved his titles. I, I loved the way <laughs> I loved his fucking titles. I am a graveyard hated by the moon. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, even, you know, um, the one that always comes to mind is eye biting and other displays of affection. Yep. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh. <laughs> you know that and, uh, Barry St. Edmonds. You know those. You know and that was those were both uh, short stories in the uh, Pentacle, that little thing by yeah you know, pirate writing. So uh, you know, a little first. trade paperback. You know, a little itsy bitsy thing. You know, maybe three eighths of an inch in uh, thickness. But it, it was uh, five stories that were five of the self stories. They were just fucking fantastic yep. but uh, I'm going to miss him a lot and you know and I feel you know there's a sense of loss and you know sorrow for Michelle who I can't even imagine <coughs> what she's going through yep. I, I cannot you know and <clears throat> You know, I think about him, and I, you know, and I will remember the, you know, the conversations that we had, the advice that he gave, and, you know, the friendship, you know, which I hold very, very dear. Right. You know, and, you know, Michelle, you know, you're on my thoughts, son, but I'm not going to pray for you. Well, so, and... I'm not going to do it, because... <laughs> I'm not going to turn, but I can tell you Michelle appreciates that. I, I don't, 
And, you know, uh, if I see a, you know, make you a sandwich or something. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, the, you know, I mean, that's, that's the one thing that, you know, you know I can't do. And, you yeah, can't make a sandwich. No, I, I can make a sandwich. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and you know say that oh yeah you know you're in my thoughts and prayers because you know first off I'd be lying and you know you're in my thoughts and you know take that for what it's worth but you know I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I I think Michelle appreciates that. Right. Dave. Well, I, I'm a, a little bit different here because, uh, unfortunately, and this is seriously one of the big regrets of my life, I never actually got to meet Peg in person. Mm. I've known him online, and I consider him a friend, and I know he considered me a friend. But uh, we just never happened to be in the same place at the same time. We would always would, like, you know, I would go to World Horror, and he wouldn't go that year, he'd go the next year, and, and things like that. So we never got a chance to meet up. Um, I knew him online. Um I'm going to say the first place that I talked to him online would be Shop Lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably. I don't remember for sure. But I know he posted on uh, The Other Dark Place, which is where a lot of us used to hang out because yeah. you know, Shop Lines was horrible for the most part. Um, and uh, I think the reason we started talking, I mean, I had read, I knew who he was. I had read some of his stuff. Uh, but he was a fan of uh, Asian action films, specifically like Hong Kong films. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, um, I've, I've always been a big fan of those. I'm more so of a fan of, like, the John Woo style, the gun play films as opposed mm -hmm. to the kung fu films. They're fun to watch, too. But um, he was extremely knowledgeable about that, that, that genre of movies. And he would tell me about movies that I, like, had never heard of. And he's like, oh, you need to see this, you know? Yeah, oh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, I'd be like, all right. And I would track it down and, and get it and watch it. And then you're like, oh, my God, this was amazing. And, <laughs> yeah. Like, what else is this guy directing? Or, you know? So we I had a ton of conversations with him about that. But... You know, we used to talk about all sorts of stuff, you know, you know movies and TV shows and books. And, um, yeah. you know, uh, I'm not going to get into specifics, but um, there was a private area, a private board where some people used to hang out and Pick was, was there. He was one of the mm -hmm. people. Um, and, uh, you know, we had tons of conversations there about, about this stuff and about writing. We probably talked about you. Yes. Yeah. Meaning you yeah. people out there listening to this. Yeah. If, if, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there, there's a really good chance of that. Um, so <laughs> that's that's all we're going to say about that. And uh, but um, you know, so I guess I talked to him all the time. I know when he was diagnosed uh, with this his, his brain cancer the first time that I sent him an email and, and I said that I wanted to know that I consider him one of my, one of my friends and that you know hoped he got better and uh, talked about some of the stuff that he had written and um, it got back to me that he did read the email and, yeah. and yeah. you know, appreciate it, considered me a friend and um, you know, I, I heard this Saturday morning, you know, I got, got up, uh, Phoebe told me, you know, that he had died and you know, I'm sad, but then I gotta tell you, I read Nick Mamatas' live journal post and I started crying. I and wanted that, to bring that up. I, I mean, you people, yeah. I, if you like Mamatas or not, I know he's controversial. If you even remotely knew who Pick was, go read what he posted. Yep. I there's no way I could say anything better than yep. he Nick absolutely yeah. nailed it. I you know I've always said, and people think I'm joking, and I'm not. When when I eventually go, the only person I want writing my actual public locus obituary is Mamatas because he he will. I, I see you shaking your head. No, Coop and I have to write. Well, it. yeah, you, you guys can, can too, but he <laughs> that has to happen. You can edit that out. He, right? does, he does not bullshit. He no. does not polish. No, he tells it like it is, yeah. and his his remembrance of Pick on his live journal is yeah. Yeah, I, and I, 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 I I'm not afraid to admit. It. I sat there and cried for a good five minutes at least. I just because it just hit me all of a sudden that. The world is a much worse place without him in it. Yeah, it is. You know, it is. Uh, and not just from his writing, which was goddamn amazing. And um, I've said on the show before that um, yeah, I enjoyed his stuff in general. I, I actually was a more of a fan of his crime stuff than his horror stuff. Not that the horror stuff was bad, right. but I like the crime stuff even more. 
And to this day, I will maintain that The Dead Letters is among the 10 greatest things I have ever read by any writer in my life. I agree. And if you have not read it, you need to unfuck that right now. I have a bunch of people that like don't normally read that kind of stuff that I've given that book to. I'm like, just read it. And they're like, holy fuck, <clears throat> this is amazing. What else has this guy written? Right. You know? um, but uh, it, it's, it's very, very sad. And I don't know Michelle, but Michelle, like Coop, I am thinking about you. I know this has to be just the worst thing ever. Um, and like Coop, I won't be praying because Coop and I agree on that subject as well. Yeah. But uh, you know, but uh, we are thinking about you and, and his family and everybody. I just this is just awful. I, I've been bummed out about this. So I found out Saturday oh, between uh, between this and then and, and the thing with Jesus. Yeah, on the same a, day. Yeah, it's not know. been a fun weekend for us. Yeah. It's um, it, it yeah. you know it should be pretty fucking apparent. I drank myself into oblivion Saturday night. Um, that was just a double whammy. You know, I, I honestly I went home and, I, and you're gonna understand how usual for this. I laid down and went to sleep. Well, and you know that I don't sleep. That rarely happens. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I yeah. I don't sleep. Well, I, yeah. I was, and uh, I just was. I was at work. Yeah. You know, Brian uh, Brian called me at work, and you know I saw them, and I'm like, what? Okay. So I pick up the phone and you know he told me and it was like, yeah. Yes. You know, and then I got dispatched to. You know, it's a dispatch to a residence for some, you know, banal bullshit where you didn't need a fucking ambulance, just didn't want to sit in the waiting room, you know. Just a little public service message from your friendly <laughs> neighborhood paramedic. I can put you in the waiting room faster than fucking anybody, okay? I will tell the hospital that you don't need an ED bed while I'm on the way, and you will take your dead goat smelling ass and sit right in the fucking waiting room. <laughs> God, I fucking hate that shit. Oh, this is why I don't have health insurance, because I don't want to ride this ambulance. I don't mind. If you're sick and you need me, you know, cool. No problem. No fucking problem. If you're sick, happy to be there. If you're hurt, happy to be there. Happy to make you feel better, you know? But if you're, if you flat out tell me, well, I called you guys because, you know, if I drove myself in, I'd be sitting in the waiting room for five hours. Motherfucker. While somebody else is dying of a gunshot, and you're transporting yeah, his exactly. ass. Yeah. You know, now I'm stripping the. No, I'm stripping this area of an ambulance and a medic to sit here and take care of your ass that doesn't need anything other than a ride. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, Fuckers. I I felt bad. I knew you were at work. Um, I I had. Maybe I should talk about that. You you and I were talking before we hit record about you know stern and honesty and telling it like mm -hmm. it is all right so i'm i've created this mythos that readers love and i feel more and more imprisoned by every fucking day so i'm basically destroying everything i've ever written with this this labyrinth thing um and i had i was in the middle of working on a chapter and uh it's just this bleak nihilistic thing everything ends and michelle messaged me and she says uh Tom, Tom went this morning, and I guess she was getting ready to put it on Facebook. And uh, she, you know, I told her I, I'd tell you and yeah. Mike Oliveri, Mikey Hike, John Urbansick, and uh, I called you first. And uh, then before I could tell Mike and Mikey and John, I, I guess at that point it hit Facebook, and uh, my phone rang off the hook. Uh, Kathy Gonzalez, and then. Mary San Giovanni and just folks throughout the day, Jack Ringa, Nick Mamatas. Eventually I did tell the other guys. Um, I didn't write until we had to go to the Jesus thing at what five. Yes, I didn't uh, I didn't come back to what I was working on until about two in the afternoon. And I took everything I was feeling. Like I said, it was already this bleak nihilistic thing. The entire universe is going to be destroyed. And I just fucking threw it into that fucking chapter. And uh, the reason I bring that up is I want, I want to circle around to something Coop said earlier about Tom, especially with his early works. We talk a lot about bleeding on the page. Uh, if you're at all familiar with my work, you've heard me talk about it. I'm sure you've heard Keelan Patrick Burke talk about it and others. Brian Smith, um, Pick was a master of that. I, I think I probably bleed a little too much. 
Pick, mm, sometimes. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. Pick was a master of bleeding just the right amount. Yeah. Um, right. He made it public, so I don't feel any disconcern talking about it. He lost his father at a very early age, mm -hmm. and that marked him. And uh, you, you see that theme come up a lot <clears throat> in his fiction. And, and the things those characters are feeling, their perspective, because that was 100% him. I mean, that was just autobiography, mind for fiction. And he was a master at doing that shit. Um, well, it was that, and you know, a lot of his outlook. You know, if you if you knew it and you could read between the lines, <clears throat> a lot of his outlook, and I think, you know, his not just his belief system so much, but his understanding of the world and, you know, how it actually works versus how it could. You know, I think he, uh, you know, with his knowledge of, you know, occult lore, yeah. you know, not necessarily taking it as, you know, fact, but, you know, saying that, you know, well, if, you know, this is how the world really works. And if all this occult and mysticism and everything is true, and that could work too, you know, I mean, the line between the two really became indistinguishable in his work. I mean, you know, you're reading a pick story and a rabbit turns around and asks you for a light. It's like, oh, okay, you know, that doesn't, you know. Yeah, it, yeah. It, no, I know what you mean, yeah. It fits in with everything else. Yeah. So I think that that permitted him to, you know, open up his, you know, open up the the palette for where he had to work much much broader than than many than many of us ever That's could. A great point, absolutely. You know, something else you brought up, Coop. I want to touch on um, when he when he first was diagnosed. You know, mm -hmm. Of course, you remember you and me and Mike and Mikey and Urban Sick. We all flew out there to Colorado to right. see him, help out Michelle. Um, you you had mentioned earlier that you know he would offer advice. You know, to assholes, he would offer advice when he should have been working on his own shit. Yeah. He would offer advice no matter what was going on in his own life. He'd take the time. Um, now, you guys remember, we we arranged so that you guys go upstairs with Michelle and I could talk to him about his literary state. Mm -hmm. Was there was there anything he wanted done that I could take care of? And the plan was I was going to sit there in the living room with him and and get this shit and hear it and make sure it got done should he not survive the surgery <laughs> and instead he had he was he had lucid moments that weekend and he was also very tired that weekend but he was he was in a lucid moment and instead he wanted to talk about what was going on in my private life <laughs> and my love life and how he could help and you know it was uh you know, we talked about it when Mary was on the air. Mary and I are, are very much on again, off again, and it was an off period, and that's all he wanted to talk about. I'm like, oh, we'll come back to that. Let's talk about your <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, That was him. He was a yeah. big brother. You yeah, know? Yeah. Focus, Tom. Brain yeah. cancer. Okay? <laughs> Focus. <laughs> but I, that was him. He didn't fuck whatever was going on with him. He, yeah. he wanted to help you, you know? Yeah. Um, you mentioned pirate writings, uh, his rejection letters. Uh, if anyone out there follows author Adam Pepper on Facebook, and if you don't, well, now go send Adam Pepper a friend request. You're welcome, Adam. Um, <laughs> he has, he scanned uh, a rejection letter from Tom that he got from pirate writings back Did in he? the day. Yeah, it's, it's up on his Facebook page. I, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the handwriting's there. Yeah. Good, um, so you can see the, the pick script. Font. Yeah. Dave, you mentioned dead letters. I, I went ahead, I put together a list of recommended reading, because I know we got a lot of younger listeners out there who mm. probably haven't read Tom. Um, you know, and I know I've turned you all on to Lansdale and Scow and others. Well, now I'm, I'm turning you on to Tom. Um, I put together, a, a, it's my personal five favorites by him. Um, they may not be your bag. They may be your bag. It's 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 a subjective list. But yeah, number one is the novel The Dead Letters. It's one of the best serial killer novels I've ever read. Uh, number two is a short story collection called Deep into That Darkness Peering. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know if that is... I don't know if it's so much a collection as an omnibus. Well, yeah. From the time, I mean, it's... Yeah, I don't know if it's still in print. I don't think it is, but uh, eBay. Yeah, it is worth whatever you pay on eBay. It collects all of uh, what were called the self stories, first of all, which is about a uh, necromancer and a cult detective and his familiar. Mm -hmm. Um... I know many of you out there like Levi Stoltzfus, and you like Repairman Jack, and you you like the Jim Butcher stuff, you like John Constantine. Well, you know, you will love the self stories. Uh, you know, they were very much uh, uh, inspired. Yeah, they ripped off John the Balladeer too. Yeah, it, well, I was just I was just going <laughs> to say, you know, it, it was very much inspired by uh, Manly Wade Wellman's John Balladeer and Karnacki, the Ghost Finder. Yeah. Which I guess will come there through you when go. we, we talk about, about Hobson. <laughs> In unison, too. Fist yeah, bump. All right. It. Ow. <laughs> I just want to point out nothing I've said in 25 episodes has earned me a fist bump. So Fist bump, Dave, just for being no, you. No, 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 no. I want a good one. No, not just not a sympathy. I will bump. give you one live on stage that scares the care. How's that? Okay. Well, All right. Not, if, I will give you head live on stage that scares the care if it means we get money for the charity. Don't. Uh, no. Uh, no. I'm going to right, make you put that into the file of shit that you're not going to say. I will, need, <laughs> I will need bourbon for that. As I am. All right. you, know, I, you know, I always said I'll never write anything out of the show. I may have to change my mind here. <laughs> and, uh, don't say head on stage with Lombardo is going to be there. Or, uh, d- d- just, no. Wherever I mean, Pick is right now, he's like, would you get out with the fucking yeah, list? Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. you can hear him yeah, saying that, I right? Do, yes, exactly. Um, he's like, you guys knock it off. So yeah, deep into that darkness period, and if you buy it, and if you you enjoy the self stories and if you want to know what happened next uh that is wrapped up in a novel called a lower deep yep. um number three on my list is uh his first western grave men which is is very lansdale-esque if you if you like lansdale's westerns you'll like that number four is a novel called hexes um yep. and number five is a a novella which is actually dedicated to you Coop. Yeah. Fucking lie down already. <laughs> you know, again, he was a master of titles. Yeah. Um, so those are my five favorites. That, that's a, I'll, I'll make sure we put this up on the website, the hard show with Brian King dot com. Um, if you have not yet been exposed to his work, those any of those five are a great introduction. So you guys yeah. got any you want to recommend? Well, I mean, you know, the Pentacle I'd already mentioned, but I mean, that's uh, those five plus five more collected in um, deep into that darkness period. Um, I would give another nod to Hex's Dead Letters uh, and uh, well, fucking lie down already. You know, for me, I mean, I, I'm, I can't be objective about that. Well, no, you I can't. can't. I mean, the whole, you know. If you haven't read it, um, fast forward. Uh, <laughs> the character in there, you know, uh, and that he's, you know, surrounding himself in, you know, in the car with all this death and, you know, just, you know, holding, you know, bringing all of his corpses near, you know, keeping them close, you know, so to speak. It, it, that is really. It, well, that's exactly what the fuck I was doing at yes. the time. <laughs> um, you know, the, the time it, that he had, uh, that that had come out, you know, I was really, really, really working on, um, well, you know, fucking up my life and, you know, pick knew it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the dedication in there is, you know, time to pull over the car and clean it out. Yep. So... I, I can't be objective about that, you know, novella because you, know, you know, because there's a, you know, because of the connection that I have to it. So, um, the the night class, you know, I I I liked it because of what it was, but I, I don't think it was anywhere near his his best stuff. Um, but I would say that is anything that isn't on the list there, you know, I would go to uh, Inside the Works, the collection from Necro. You know, well, not so much a collection; it's more of an anthology. You know, the uh, that had the you know, had the works, and you know, I liked a lot of those stories too. So, uh, 
really anything if it if it has it if it has Tom Piccarelli as a byline of you you should gonna read be, it yeah you're gonna be, even that uh, that uh, anthology he uh, he edited the doubles one the poetry that you know there was a lot in there that normally not my bag right but that I did you know I I enjoyed it yeah um, and you know probably a lot of that would, may have been you know because I know Tom and you know liked it but you know I did enjoy that as well so uh, what it, you know what do you uh, um, what would you recommend besides the besides dead the list, letters yeah, I mean, we've, already, we've yeah. talked about you know. besides the list that you guys you guys gave um, the the two things that I, I would add would be uh, choir of real children oh yeah oh, which yeah. again when you talk about titles I mean that yeah like you saw see that in the bookstore it, like how can you not pick that up and look at it just based on the title and it also right. has a yeah. great opening sentence um, go get the, yeah, go get the book. Why? It's right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, choir, 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 choir. Starts with a C. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like the O with the one on the sides lopped off. <laughs> we move in spasms. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's like, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll keep reading. Yeah, I'll keep reading. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the other thing I want to recommend, and uh, I remember he sent me to this before – he uh, sent this to me before it was published, uh, was uh, Every Shallow Cut. Oh, um, yes. Um, which is just amazing and awesome, and I I don't want to tell you what it's about. You just want to read it. Yeah. Um, but I remember reading this, you know, like I said, before it was published. And uh, yeah, I, I remember writing back to him, I'm like, uh, I, I am blown away. I just, you know, it's so good. You know, but I, I actually have never read any of his Westerns, so I need to fix that myself. Um, I'm not a huge Western fan, but. Well, you can borrow yeah, mine if yeah. you want. I know you'll give them back. Yeah, well, that's yeah. true, yeah. Well, yeah, I kind of see you on a regular basis, yeah. so. Uh, yeah, people that don't get books back, or there's got to be a special place in hell for them. Yeah, there, <laughs> there, there better be. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. We're sitting here talking about pick stuff. I mean, welcome to hell. <laughs> Yes. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, how yeah. could I forget to talk about that? I don't know. <laughs> um, That's what, that, you know, you wondered why I'm here. Early, there you go. Well, yes. Early on in, in our careers, Jeff and I were both part of a, a newsletter for writers called Jobs in Hell. Yes, I have a first name. It is actually Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, we, we inspired Pick to write his... Because of Jobs in Hell, he wrote his book, Welcome to Hell, Welcome a guide hell. for the beginning writer. Yep. Uh, great, not great little nonfiction read, um, which I believe is still in print. You I, can still get that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I know it's yeah. I know it's available on Kindle. I don't know about yeah. paperback still, but yeah, so many works. I mean, and and so many genres. Um, well, I think by the time you know. He had like what, like thirty? Was it like thirty novels or something like that? Um, closer to forty. Was it? Yeah. Was it that many? Yep. If yeah, you I mean, count, so like, the I mean, collaboration he, with Ed Gorman and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. 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 He, he's, you know, his, you know, Dark Father was, you know, he was what still in college when he still wrote. in college when he wrote it and sold it. Yeah. And you know he, <laughs> all right, funny pick story. Um, his first novel was Dark Father. And he hated it. He, he as as Coop said, he wrote it in college, sold it in college, and yeah, and he, he did. He did hate that. The, talking with Pick about Dark Father was like talking about uh, you know the so, ending to the Rising with me. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm talking like real writers. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, that would be like uh, you know talking about the stricken novels with Lee. Oh yes. Yeah, you know, it's the same kind, the same kind of fucking hatred. I should <laughs> mention in three weeks we're going to be talking about the Straker novels with Lee. I, I'm sure he's excited. He is excited. <laughs> uh, actually, in, in the uh, in in emailing with Lee and setting up the the show where where Edward Lee is going to be on, uh, one of the first things he said is we're not going to talk about fucking Nightmare. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Guess again. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the wrong thing to tell us. <laughs> but no, but Pick, Pick's hate, I mean, all authors hate their first novel, but Pick's hatred for Dark Father went beyond that. Like, he would literally go on eBay when eBay was a new thing, and any time a copy of Dark Father would pop up, he'd buy it. Yeah, he'd buy it so, it so nobody yeah. else could, yeah. would have yeah. to read it. Like, he went out and found, he haunt, used bookstores. If he found copies of Dark Father, he'd buy them so nobody else could fucking read it. It was, it was an obsession <laughs> with him. <laughs> and it's not a bad novel. 
I mean, it's the first novel, but right. it's not. It's enjoyable. So, all right. Well, I do. He wanna... gave good advice on much worse novels. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and, there is that. Yeah. And, and he gave blurbs on much worse novels. <laughs> There's that too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you got a couple by him, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, blurred, he blurred real writers, too. So. Um, all right, well, do you guys have any final thoughts before I wrap us up here? I, I, I have two more things I want to say, but I'm going to concede to you guys because you'll talk right I, over me anyway. Well, that's yeah, there, there is, no, uh, go ahead and try to wrap up, and yeah. if I, you know, have something no, else to I, I mean, I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to say that, like, you know, I, I miss the guy, you know. He's obviously been offline for a while, you know, because of his yeah. illness. I've, I've missed talking to him. Um, I have to say, too, that uh, it's an amazing miracle that he survived the one bout of yeah. brain cancer. I mean, yeah. because as far as I remember, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, he was supposed, the time you guys would visit him. It was a he, 98% chance, chance of dying. Yeah. yeah, he was yeah. like, that's why you guys all went to visit him, because yeah. it was like months at best. Yeah. And brain cancer, I mean, cancer in general is fucking horrible. Brain cancer is particularly evil. I, I know a guy who... Well, brain uh, cancer for a writer. Is yeah, like, you but know. like, I know a guy who was diagnosed, and four days later he died. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's, yep. it's, it's so fast normally. Yeah. So, um... You know, I the fact that he survived as long as he did, I I just testament to his will. I think. Well, I think it's testament yeah. to, you know, his will. Yeah. And, you know, the the dedication of the, uh, I think it was what University of Colorado. Yep. Yeah. The, uh, I think so. University Hospital. I think it was the teacher at well, University Hospital that you know that took care of him, but. Uh, you know, and, you know, and Michelle and the support yeah. group that he had. Yeah. And, you know, I like to think, you know, I, I didn't have a, we didn't have a whole bunch of contact with him after, you know. I, right. You he know, couldn't type. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, yeah. you know, but I like to think that that extra time that he had, you know, I hope he got to, you know, spend it, you know, with Michelle was he wanted because yeah, that's, I tell you yeah. I tell you I know that if you could say you know if you told him on Friday you know that Tom you're going to die tomorrow you know but I can give you 24 hours he'd want, yeah. want to spend it with Michelle absolutely yeah. you know? and you know I'm sure he'd want to you know so for that you know, it, it's. Uh, I think that that extra time that he got from the from the first round, and you know, I mean, he was essentially, you know, cured. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, and you know, you had the recurrence, but you know, the the treatment. You know how how they're. I think that the the treatments that they did on that they did on Tom. You know, we'll, we'll be seeing, you know, more of those, at least in the medical field. You know, Absolutely. Least, you know, I think that that, uh, I mean, if that's the only good thing that can come out of this, that, you know, what they did with him, you know, bought that extra time, I think that he would be, you know, very okay with that. Well, you raise, you raise a great point. I mean, and I apologize. Um. And we've we've talked about his personal impact on us, and we've talked about his impact on not just the horror genre, but on many genres. But uh, it can't be understated, you know, the fact that he survived that first round of brain cancer. I mean, they were they were writing articles in medical journals about yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Um, it opened up. Yeah, I mean, it kicked down the fucking doors for treatments. Um, there's something else he he impacted with his life. Um, I, I, I want to do two things. First of all, I, very quickly, I want to thank Dean Koontz and Stephen King. And they know why. And uh, you should know that it was appreciated. And uh, the other thing I want to point out is uh, by the time you guys are listening to this, the, the new issue of Locus will be on the newsstands. Um, it's it's going to be a, a, a memoriam for Tom. Um, Contributors include Nick Mamatas, Jack Haringa, 
Uh, I've read both of theirs, and both of them brought me to tears. Mama Tosses is different than the one that he posted online. Um, I also wrote something for it. I believe Ed Gorman and a few other people are going to write for it as well. Uh, so, you know, it's rare that I tell anybody to pick up a magazine anymore because we have this thing called the Internet. But, uh, yeah, you know, head out next week and grab an issue of Locust if you can. Um, Dave, you got anything before we wrap? No. I All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, thanks for hanging in there with us. Um, I do want to thank our sponsor again, the second annual, excuse me one moment. Scares the care of weekend. Thank you. A 501C IRS, see, if I do it in the radio voice, <laughs> approved charity horror convention taking place July 24th through the 26th in Williamsburg, Virginia. Come meet Kim Coates from Sons of Anarchy, Kane Hodder, Piper Laurie, Sid Haig, Ken Free, Brian Keene, Edward Lee, Kelly Owen, I should say celebrity Kelly Owen. Celebrity Kelly F. Paul yes. Wilson, Carlton Mellick, and many, many more. All of the proceeds go to charity. Visit scaresthecareweekend.com for more details. And if you can't make the convention, you can still contribute to the charity. Go to the website and you'll find the link and all the information for that. Uh, if there's something you would like Dave Cooper or I to talk about, tweet us at the Horror Show BK and at Meteor Notes, or leave a comment on our website at the Horror Show with Brian Keen .com. The Horror Show is available on iTunes, Android, Roku, Stitcher, and all other platforms via Project iRadio. Visit them online at projectiradio.com. And folks, please, if you have a moment, even if you don't listen to us on iTunes, subscribe to us on iTunes anyway and leave a review of the show. You'd really be helping us out uh, if you want to do that. Um, we always close with a quote. You know, last week it was Chris Squire from Yes. You know, uh, I have two this week. First of all, it, for the writers out there, my favorite quote by Tom uh, was always, if, if you are stranded alone on a desert island and you spend your time writing stories in the sand with sticks, then you are meant to be a writer. And uh, the other quote is uh, one of the last passages in Fucking Lie Down Already, which we talked about earlier. Um, some of this will only make sense to you if you've read the novella, but the rest of it I think you'll all dig. There, in the shimmering luster of night, Kathy did a cheer in her high school outfit, smiling, welcoming the opportunity to help him set free his failures and grant him another chance to get it right. But first... First, she said, with a glint of love in her eyes, hands swaying over his ass as if they were about to embrace in a wonderfully slow dance. First, he had to take a little rest. So he laid down. We'll see you next week, folks.